of this day, way at the beginning, like just after midnight, the Yankees did what every Yankee fan wanted them to do. They did what every Yankee fan was uncertain whether would it would be done. They signed the best pitcher available. Now, they probably signed one of the top two pitchers in all of baseball. And you can actually say that the two best pitchers in baseball work in New York City. Jacob deGrom and Garrett Cole. But the Yankees did not get him in the bargain bin. They did not get him with a bargain. They paid more money for Garrett Cole than has ever been paid average annual value of any player in baseball history. Even more, they're giving him more than Mike Trout. So a pitcher in the big leagues makes 32 starts in the regular season. 32. He's going to make more than a million dollars a start. Now, you don't get paid in the postseason, so the Yankee hope is that he makes five starts in October, and then it's going to be about a million dollars a start. They paid high for him. They feel that he's worth it. They went against everything that they have preached for the last five to seven years, the fiscal responsibility, the building from within, the you only win with home runs. They realized, because they do adjust on the fly, that they needed that one pitcher, that every single time he takes the ball, he's going to give them at least seven innings. Damn the fact that he has to face a lineup the third time. Because that one day out of five, the Yankees can tell their bullpen, for the most part, chill out. We got this. They didn't have that pitcher. As good as Tanaka is, he's a 100-pitch pitcher, if that. Paxton, six innings, if that. Everybody else is that sort of guy. Not this guy. So when you say, well, what changed? They wouldn't give Corbin the extra year. They would not give anybody extra years. They offered Machado five years. They wouldn't go to 10. Why this guy? And I'm sure that the answer, they can't even comment publicly because Cole has to fly east in order to take a physical. But their answer is going to be because this guy's different. This guy's special. Now, you could say Cole took the Yankees because it was the most money. And that's probably the case. But I think they made a, a, a strong presentation to him. They pulled out a wild card. His favorite player as a kid was Andy Pettit. Shows up at his doorstep. And one other thing. It's being reported that both the Angels and the Dodgers offered over $300 million for eight years. And I think the difference, the reason the Yankees got him, Hal Steinberg said, give him the ninth year. I mean, who knows? The oceans might rise. We could be dead in nine years. I'm not saying that Hal's saying that, but if I'm already Moreno, I mean, you, you can't say the Yankees desperately needed Cole. You could say the Yankees feel that Cole's the difference between going to the American League Championship Series and possibly winning a World Series. Okay, you could say that. But the Angels desperately needed Cole. Why wouldn't you go the ninth year? You want 10 years for Albert Pujols. You want 13 years for Trout. You're going to draw the line there? That's why I didn't even understand last year. Why did the Yankees die on the hill of the sixth year for Corbin? Why? Well, this year they wouldn't die on the year of the eighth or ninth year. They gave them the ninth year. The Angels and the Dodgers wouldn't. And here we yeah. are. The Yankees have one of the best pitchers in baseball, and their rotation is strong enough, and their team is strong enough that they are now considered the favorite well, in Major League Baseball to win the World Series yeah. next year. Now, but make no mistake, the Angels would would have to get them, not the Dodgers, because I think the Dodgers are still the favorites to yep. win the West. Is to just become relevant again and make the playoffs. It's important. Yankees know they're going to be a hundred win team that's going to go to the playoffs. They've won 203 games over the last couple of years. This guy was brought here for the postseason and to win in the postseason, all right? And Yankee fans should be the first to tell you because we were on the air all those years that A-Rod was winning MVPs and Yankee fans didn't care because they didn't win. If he goes out, goes 24-3 and three and wins the Cy Young, and the Yankees don't win the championship, it's not going to matter to the fans. This is to win a championship. Yankees have seen Cy Youngs. They've seen division championships. They've seen 100 win seasons. They want to see a ring, and they haven't seen one since 2009. So that's what this is about here. And the Yankees, and you bring up a great point, 
they've been so against doing this. Mm -hmm. They've been fiscally responsible really since Hal has taken over full time. Wouldn't give the extra uh, couple of years to Cano, who at the time was their best player. Right. They offered him seven. He wanted ten. They he wanted, wanted no ten. They were out. We're not dancing in those waters anymore. We're not doing what we did with CC and Alex Rodriguez. We don't want guys at the end of their career making money doing nothing. And now they've changed. Now, is it because Cole is just that singular talent that you're willing to change for? Because rules are made to be broken because sometimes somebody comes along and he changes the rules. Or is this an admittance that, you know what, we tried to do it fiscally responsible. It wasn't working. Now we're going to have to change. So we'll get to, well, I'm sure we'll talk to Brian Cashman at some point. We'll talk to Hal at some point. But why the change? Is it because of this player? Because it wasn't the pitching necessarily that cost them the championship the last couple of years. It was the hitting going south. So is this admitting that being fiscally responsible doesn't work? Or is he special? Uh, I believe it. I believe it's because he's special. And, and I'm going to lay out a little bit of a plan here. Peter will like this. I love plans. How they just got this guy improved exponentially. Because remember, last year they won 103 games without Severino and without Cole. Now they'll have Severino the entire year and add Garrett Cole. They might win a record number of games. But here's how you can fit the number in. Because right now their payroll is over the final threshold. So they're going to be taxed at a very high rate. And their draft position is going to be affected greatly. No CC Sabathia. That's $10 million. Okay. No D.D. Gregorius. That's about 10 or 11. So let's say $21 million. And they're trying to trade Jay Happ. If they trade Jay Happ in a $17 million, and the way you could do that is you could piggyback one of their great young prospects with Jay Happ. A team takes the $17 million, and Jay Happ does not have a no trade clause. Boom. You have just created, in an easy maneuver, $38 million in cap room. Now, they don't have a cap, they have a tax. And you're adding 36, and you got the team better, and the guys you subtracted. Doesn't, it oh. doesn't affect them at all. No, but that answers 2020. But the, but the reason that they were always against giving these long-term contracts is because they end up being an albatross at the end of the deal. And, and this one probably will be. Now, it's very arbitrary, right, Peter? You'll hear Yankee fans. Michael says it. You win a, you win a championship, all's forgiven. Nobody's going to care about the contract. You know, nobody cares about the CC contract because they won in 2009. Nobody cares about the A-Rod contract because they won in 2009. But that's kind of arbitrary. So one championship can be forgiven. So if they win the championship in 2020, but you fast forward over the next eight years, they don't win. And then in 2027, we're taking calls from Yankee fans. Hopefully we're still on the air and we're still alive, complaining that they haven't won in six and seven years, and they've got a 37-year-old... Um, pitcher who's doing nothing making 34 million dollars a year 36 million dollars a year right because you know the back end of that deal he's not going to be worth that well, he, i mean how many pitchers at the age of 37 38 are pitching where they deserve that kind of money unless he can reinvent himself which is very but, but very right, difficult to no, do they did this because of now they want to win now and they gave him a full no trade clause and he has an opt-out after five years so if he's still pitching great at the age of 34 Maybe he opts out, and I, I think if he opted out, the Yankees would probably say goodbye, although maybe maybe in those five years he wins four Cy Youngs, and then everything changes. But I, I think it's, I, you know, take the money aside, take the years aside, and you have to ask yourself this one question. Did the Yankees get better today? And the answer is a resounding right. yes. How did they not get better? They acquired a, not a good pitcher, a, a great, great pitcher. pitcher. Great.